Thank you, Senator Lujan. Thank you so much for chairing this important hearing. And what I love about this big committee is that we also still get good attendance. So important policy areas. My colleague, colleagues and I, um, but particularly Senator Young, just worked on a major uh, innovation act. And this reminds me, Dr. Bazelon, the same kind of question. I mean, we said we needed to modernize the US advances in chip fabrication. And yet we know a lot of people are like, Moore's law is ending. We're not going to keep doubling capacity. So what are we going to do? We have to look at new substrates, new materials, new ways. Like, how are we going to get more out of the chips at a time when we're trying to say we're going to have driverless cars and there's 30 different kinds of chips in the car controlling information. And then you have Qualcomm and 5G. So everybody's, so it's almost nearly impossible to think about all of the, if you will, applications. So I'm intrigued by your testimony because you're saying we're kind of looking at this from a budget perspective, and that's kind of a very narrow perspective. So what would you say are the buckets or uh, areas of how to t take a better look at spectrum need, need, spectrum need, and then you can get to these questions that we're kind of down in the weeds on, which is, you know, the, these uses, that use, who gets it, what's the primary, but I'm not even sure we have a picture of what the need is or the possible need out there um, for us and where we might hit demand limitations. So it's a question, we don't use spectrum just because it's fun. I mean, I'm a ham radio operator, so maybe I do in my spare time. But uh, commercially, we use it because um, it creates value. So it's about capacity on the wireless networks. And capacity can be increased in different ways. You can add spectrum to the network. That's what most of we've been talking about here. But more efficient technologies, uh, 5G put, creates the throughput on the spectrum much more efficiently. It also uh, uses the bands in a more sensible way, so you have uh, the longer, the lower bands used for sort of longer term communications, and the higher bands for in the cities with the larger capacities. Um, you can also uh, invest in infrastructure, dividing cell sites by reusing the same spectrum more often. So all of that capacity, that's the way we create capacity for all the different needs. The those needs will be there. They're um, there's the, the ones we know about, like the commercial wireless uh, operators uh, that most of our networks are designed to meet. But the new Internet of Things is going to have a completely different demand profile on spectrum. Um, uh, and then there's always the things we don't know about yet. Right. But, I mean, we, this isn't slowing down. N no. We, 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 this demand for communications... Um, is increasing, if you just look at any of the uh, forecasts, Erickson, or any of them of, of usage of wireless data, it's explosive. Um, and it's in a, explosive in a way that's not gonna be met by just spectrum, more spectrum alone. Um, it's many times the amount of usage now that's gonna require, spectrum is gonna require more infrastructure investment, and it's gonna require using the spectrum and technology much smarter than we are today. And so you're, you're advocating, besides looking at budget issues, that some of those people should get whatever points or consideration based on that efficiency, or that we as a government should promote that just as we would promote more efficiency if we came up with a new material on chips that made it, uh, you know, continue to deliver more effectiveness. Yeah, yes, when we, in the discussion about uh, unlicensed, we look at, we want to look at the value created from it. The budgetary incentives are, um, they're certainly not the reason uh, for, for, they're not the first reason for auctions from a spectrum policy perspective. The point is to get the spectrum reallocated into new users as efficiently as possible to the extent that auctions create uh, the will to do that. That's a, that's a good thing, but that's not the reason for uh, spectrum policy in the first place. But, but what about applications? I mean, we just heard some debated here, obviously the 911 and other things. Um, the, 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 the next generation 911, uh, the idea that uh, you know, we have uh, iPhones, but we still have a, a network that doesn't 
universally use them is just amazing. So of course we have to invest there. Having the money come from the sector makes a lot of sense. Um, spectra, value from spectrum gets spent in different ways. We've talked about the ability to redirect the funds for uh, programs such as that, but they also get spent in other ways like when there's a build out requirement, a builder, a bidder will bid less for the spectrum. So that's the value created from it that's being spent in the holistic policy yeah. perspective. I, th I think all these issues are, are important, like how to, you know, figure out interference and how to have a more clear role and how to have more predictability. But I do think that we have to get a, a better picture here of how much demand is coming at us because I think it's phenomenal. And I think we're gonna be pushed to figure out what are those uses. And so we're, if we feel like we're fe seeing competition and competitiveness and challenges and people throwing this over the, the rail at you, I guarantee you it's gonna be even worse in five or 10 years. So yeah. figuring out what, what is a good government policy, a way for us to input on that. And so it's about, again, about those big picture uses and what are policies besides just GAO and the budget what are policies that would help us as a nation think through this? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, my time is up, but if you have 30 seconds, I'm sure the chairman would let you. Um, the, the, the bigger picture policies issues is the, the wireless sector is gonna continue to grow. We are gonna have a robust wireless sector in this country in the future. We do have a choice as to whether or not it's gonna be one that is based on low prices, high usage and um, more usage, more fulfillment of the wireless capacity, or one that's a little bit more constrained, higher prices, a little bit less usage. But it's still gonna grow either way, and it's, yeah. it's gonna be a challenge to meet that demand. I'm sure people are gonna say they want lower costs, but thank you. The preferable one.